What this is, is a, uh, a video timestamp. Two saws. This was one of the Fuglies. And that's a saw that just came in. And what I want to do is get a first impression of how that saw is before I touch it. And I also want to see where it compares to this saw, which is a, a Farmer Jones modified saw, to see where we can go, if we can do anything with this saw to make it faster. The premise is, it's a customer saw, he wants it tuned up, and he wants it to go a little bit faster than it does now. And this is one of my standard saw builds. So I want to see if there's any difference at all. Or am I just uh, pissed in the wind? So we'll start out with uh, making a couple of test cuts with both saws. And then I can go back and look at the video to see what we have for times. Yes, I think we can make some improvements. Tell you what, that chain he's got there is pretty damn sharp. So he knows how to sharpen a chain. Anyway, this is going to be kind of like that uh, 242 video. That's what a guy has. And what can we, and when we're done, what can you do to make that better than it is? Well, here's that uh, little 350 you saw running. It obviously wasn't running as good as it should, so a little bit of analysis turned up some reasons why.
first and foremost it had uh, basically very very low compression and a stuck ring and a, a slightly uh, scored piston probably had something to do with that and looking in on the exhaust side of the cylinder uh, confirms that <laughs> the chances of that having a seal are pretty low a um, couple of other observations is there's a lot of carbon in that exhaust port so that cylinder needs some help um, it's more aluminum transfer from the piston than actual scoring so I think it's salvageable if that's a route that makes sense in addition to that it had some problems in the handle where that was completely stripped out so what was happening is because the any vibe wasn't holding the saw in proper relationship to the handle or holding the the, the case in proper relationship to the handle that means when the handle was pushing on the throttle rod it wasn't getting full throttle on the on the carburetor itself so that was the second problem so it never really got to full throttle not that it would have helped but those were two symptoms you saw on that test cut one low compression that's why it was so hard to start and two it never got to full throttle and three even if it did with a stuck ring like that it probably wouldn't have made much difference now why that's always the question you have to ask why did it uh, fail you know age obviously is it's a good reason but I took a section of the fuel line the fuel line had uh, cracked so that was part of its problem and I think the other part of its problem was it has one of these plastic clamped boots and that along with the fact that the uh, hole for the pulse is fairly plugged up uh, actually it's pretty amazing this saw ran at all isn't it when you think about it so now what do you do got all these parts this is one of those open port cylinders and the question is do I make it run with its original cylinder or do I go to the junk bin and pull out some other cylinders and see if I can't make it run a little bit better hmm and since this is not a, a true business for me um, I've got some latitude here one thing is for certain as with all these projects they start out with a fair amount of cleanup that has to happen one of the things uh, also want to point out is this is one of the bearing caps that have the coarse or coarser threaded screws and I don't know if that contributes to having it back off but it might I don't know that's a question for a smart person either way it's going to get put back together without a base gasket for sure of course I'm going to check the squish first but pretty much tell you Farmer Jones for this one at a minimum that was in the handle so I'm going to take this apart it's not easy you got to kind of put this in a vise and then get a wrench on the plastic and twist it out but I'm going to take that out and uh, do one of two things one either put just a standard screw back in and epoxy the handle or two um, get a screw with a little bit larger diameter and still epoxy it in there I'll decide and I'll show it on the video when I make that decision Um, he's going to get a, uh, a 346 top end. Now, a couple things you got to do is uh, when you blend the 346 top end to a plastic 350 bottom end, on some of them, you got to make a little clearance that would be on the clutch side, clear the case. And the other thing is, since the 346 pulse is through here, um, I take the bearing cap and die grind a channel 
right to that point there so it can uh, help it with pulsing. And this is that modified 346, 42 millimeter top end. Now, of course, it's going to get the uh, Husqvarna OEM steel banded manifold. That's going to help reliability downstream. But I want to make a couple of points. I had mentioned before that I take these these uh, bearing caps and put them on a flat plate. I wish I had the camera. When I first started on this, it was only touching on just the outer edges. And this section right here, um, when I had taken this apart, that was just all wet right in there. So it was obviously drawing through there. And I've got to tell you, it was probably three or four thousandths lower than the contact points. So it was going to be hard for it to seal anyway. Which is why I take these and put them on a flat plate and uh, flatten off these gasket surfaces, both top and bottom. Gotta help. The other thing is, I don't know if it's because the thread on those bolts are a little bit more coarse, but every one of the 350s I've taken apart with that coarser screw, which holds the bearing cap to the plastic case, every one was obviously leaking at that intersection between the bearing cap and the plastic case. So I don't know if it's a trend. I don't know if it's because of that uh, coarser thread. They don't get quite as much bite. I'm tempted to actually helicoil these to a finer thread. I think I'm just going to get this one together and use a lot of 1194 to both to keep the screws from backing out but also get a better seal. But if I build a, a more performance oriented version of this with higher compression, I do think I'm going to take all those coarse threaded uh, holes and helicoil them to a fine thread like the later versions of the 350R. But build notes. I had mentioned it in my prior video, but I think I, I would I think I would suggest that every time you take a 350 apart, you put that on a flat plate. Don't ever put a bearing cap on that has not been flattened off. What I mean by a flat plate is I have a piece of uh, 3 8 steel plate that I had put on a blancher grinder and just flatten that surface right off and then you put a piece of sandpaper down there, in this case emery cloth, and then work the bottom of the uh, bearing cap like I had on my prior videos. I think that's something you should do in every one of them because the more I see, very few of them have been actually flat on that surface. So I really don't know how they sealed well. And in this case, it obviously had not. So anyway, a build tip. I had to relieve this a little bit to make clearance and cut the skirt. That's really about it. It's an aftermarket piston. Not my favorite, but believe it or not, this is a Golf. And uh, I'm beginning to like those more than some of the other ones I've seen in the marketplace. Um, I got one from uh, uh, Mako where you measure the wall thickness of the skirts and there was a 30 thousandths difference and I kid you not. One thing I do, I don't know if you can tell, is I put a little bit of oil and let it run into all the bearings. You know, I just use two-stroke oil as assembly oil. You know, so they're not dry. Yeah, the first time you fire it up, it fogs out the mosquitoes, but I always feel a little bit better. I mean, is it real? I mean, does it make a difference? Yeah, you can argue. It's just what I do.
This is a hybrid. It is a 350, an older 350, like a 2002 vintage 350 Husqvarna. And it has the uh, 346 top end on it. So when I was, while I was putting this all together, I learned some things and I wanted to pass it along. First, bearing caps. And I had mentioned this in my prior videos. Some have fine thread and some have a coarser thread uh, set of screws or bolts that hold them together, hold them to the plastic case and also hold the cylinder. Um, this saw here had the coarser ones. So when I put it together, I pretty much glued it together with uh, 3 bond 1194. Hopefully those screws don't back out. Almost every one of the 350s I've taken apart of that vintage that has the bearing caps with a coarser threaded screws uh, were all hand tight. They were not very tight at all. Second thing is when I put them on a flat plate and roughed them with some sandpaper to try to flatten them out, all the bearing caps that I've pulled off the 350s had quite a bit of flex in them. I had to take them down, you know, three to five thousandths minimum to get them flat. And also, uh, the bearing caps are away. If your squish is off, when you pull the base gasket out, that takes it down some distance, but you can take down the top of the bearing cap to bring it further to get your squish closer to the 20 thousandths. And I did so on this saw. It's at 20 thousandths exactly. Um, and I mentioned that as well. But here's a subtle one, and the reason why I'm putting together the video, carburetors. The carburetor that came off the 350 was a Walbro. And when I first assembled this saw here, I put that Walbro right back on. And I had troubles. It wouldn't idle properly. What would happen is I could get it to run 3,000 RPMs at idle and everything was fine. Of course, that's a little bit too high. You want to get down like 26, 2700 RPMs. And when I would back out the uh, idle screw, it would just get like to a point where it was like a switch. As soon as I got past a certain amount of rotations out, the saw would just load up and die. It was like putting a choke on. So that frustrated me for a while, and I went around in circles trying to figure out why it would do that. And my instinct was it had to do with the throttle plate. But, you know, I'm thinking, my God, this carburetor worked just fine with the other cylinder. And just for kicks, I took a Zama carburetor off. A later model 350 and put it on this saw and what you saw there is the result it's a snappy saw top to bottom runs just clean so uh, I wanted to know what is different between the Walbro and the Zama now I don't have another Zama or I could show you in the throttle plate if you look very closely I don't know if the camera will pick it up there's a notch right down here somewhere if you look carefully inside you'll see a little notch so when, you, when, the, when the throttle gets closed, the only air that comes through is what bleeds around the outside of the throttle plate and what goes underneath that notch. And there's a little jet right there. A little fuel comes out. And that's basically your idle circuit right there. On the Zama, it has a notch, but there's also a hole drilled in the throttle plate. And that's really the biggest difference I can find. And I'm just wondering whether or not the hole in the throttle plate of the Zama is why this saw now works perfectly at idle. They both work good, you know, high RPMs, and when the RPMs got up, both, both carburetors worked just fine. It was just that uh, idle situation where the uh, Walbro just simply wouldn't work. But that was a frustrating uh, deal. So the things I had to do, just to summarize, to blend a 346 top end to a 350 was one, is I had to make some clearance on the clutch side where the, the transfer ports are. I had to machine away a little material there so that it fit inside the plastic case. Two, the flange thickness of a 350 right here is a little thicker than the 346 cylinder. So I had to take the screws and shorten them by that difference, about 50 thousandths. Three, I had to get rid of this Walbro carburetor that worked just fine, by the way, on an open port 44 millimeter 350 cylinder, but just simply didn't work at all on the uh, closed port 346 42 millimeter cylinder. Those are the major things I had to do. 
And since I was in that saw, um, like I said before, and it had the coarse thread bearing cap, I uh, pretty much covered those screws with 1194 before I put them back in that bearing cap, both the cylinder hold down screws and the screws that hold the bearing cap to the case. Lots of 1194 in there. Hmm, what else? Those, I think, are the major issues that I had to, to uh, work my way around in order to blend that cylinder. So this saw here is a hybrid. It's a hybrid 350, 346, and it runs really strong. I'm kind of curious. Well, I've got to do this all over again because I did another iteration of the headless saw, saw man there, headless sawyer. So let me try to make it quicker this time because I'm running out of daylight. Are great but I think that'll be a something for a reference I think one of those cuts was clean off comes the bar Oh! <laughs> 
Well, that's it. I'm actually a little disappointed. I thought that would pull a whole lot harder. Um, coyotes, listen to the coyotes. When I did this test yesterday with a different... Wow, those things are serenading us. I hope I get this on the video. What I found yesterday was if I finessed this saw, um, it, it would hold a higher chain. I can't believe how loud those coyotes are. I've got to put this on the video. You can't make this stuff up. Let's listen to the yotes for a minute. Probably doesn't like the fact that I'm making noise in his backyard. Oh, this is priceless. I'm going to put this on a video. So anyway, bottom line is, uh, it's getting dark. Obviously, I'm running out of daylight. You probably can't even see this. This disappointed. Yesterday, I thought it was stronger. Um, but when I used the same bar and chain, that fug we saw kicked his tail. It's not even close. A lot more torque. You know, that old modified cylinder. Wow, this is educational. I'm going to listen to the coyotes for just a little more before I shut this thing off. I think I need to do a little more tuning on this little saw. Not pleased. <clears throat> I think it should handily outcut my fugly saws with that different cylinder design. Anyway, <laughs> maybe I'll just have this as a video into of itself. Maybe fold in some build stuff and that's it. And uh, we'll listen to the coyotes howl and forget the saws. Anyway, talk to you later. Bye for now.